again. Okay. Nolite to Mary. This is my contribution to the uh, science fiction liter literature of the world. This story has many beginnings. It's the ending that's elusive. An old man shakes off his city clothes. Trilby hat is in round plaid. Knee-length Burberry. Grey silk cravat. Blue dress shirt with frame cuffs. Black braided belt. Silver buckle. Alligator mock toe shoes flecked with mud. Stained white over the calf socks. Garters. Form-fitting riding breeches. And tattered long johns. He drops a boarskin wallet. A Gucci watch. Sony Ericsson cell phone and an assorted set of keys on a ring into a large bin labeled recycling. Then from a long rack he selects a rough woolen robe. Thus garbed and with cold bare feet he walks into the night. Once upon a lifetime eons ago and far into the future as suns blaze, then sink into silent black holes. As other universes sizzle into being. A monk, servant to a timeless father god or mother goddess, lives alone on a great arid plain. One long and dusty day, when the biting winds chew at his blistered nose, and blue bottle flies sting his festering cheeks. The monk feels his end drawing near and journeys out into the desert. He sits in the cooling sand. He gazes at the immensity of stars. In these times they sparkle brilliantly even in the noonday sun. The swirling galaxies swarm in the purple sky as if some astronomical charwoman had shaken out her dust mop in the great wind. I know this is true. I am that lonely monk. I am old and my joints ache, even in the dry air. I lift my withered arms high up and stars envelop me. I float like a wafted dry leaf up inside the Milky Way. Down mega light years below I see the planet Earth. Faster and faster it spins like a moth around its flickering candle star. Soon it's a speck of sand amid a trillion other worlds. I watch the Earth I had known evaporate. It is a dewdrop in the morning sun. My hand is full of spinning orbs of brilliant light. Meteors pierce my naked thigh, yet I feel no fear. Long ago, my robe of wool and helm had floated from my limbs. Suddenly I feel a light too bright to bear. At its center is a spinning, pulsating sphere. Sometimes the circle is a great triangle, other times it's a tiny baby. From the light comes a great wind blowing in steadily increasing circles. I float inside an enormous living heart. I hear the steady rhythm, ba-doom, ba-doom, ba-doom. A timeless voice calls out to me. At first it's loud, then it's soft. Next, it's a whisper, like a breeze in tall pines. Then I hear an echoing tongue. I don't recognize that voice, yet I embrace its invading message. Ego sum nolite tamere. It is I. Fear not. Never heard that one before, have you? No, I haven't. I love that one. Okay. Now. Is getting tired? No. no. Want me to continue? Yeah. Oh my goodness! Yeah. I had a teddy bear when I was small. <coughs> I 
Oh, I love that teddy bear. Then one day, oh, it disappeared. <laughs> ashes, dust and ashes. Anyway, I wish teddy bear would do as he's told. Although he's mischievous, I don't like to scold. Last night, he wrote crayon all over the wall. Mummy was furious, blamed me for it all. He tips over my milk and spills juice on the rug. He even made Jennifer swallow a bug. <laughs> it just isn't fair that they blame it on me. It's Teddy who's naughty. I wish they could see. I'll have to make Teddy stand facing the wall and won't let him leave till he owns up to all. I wish Teddy Bear would learn to be good, not do what he shouldn't, but do what he should. <laughs> you and Dr. Seuss. <laughs> oh, interesting. Dr. Seuss was born on your birthday. 15th of June. Oh, oh wow. That's, uh, that's great. That's lovely. I will never meet him sometime. What year? <laughs> 1904. Oh, a little, a little before me. Yeah. A little before my time. Just a little. <laughs> About uh, 29 years. That's, a, that's amazing to me. Isn't that? <laughs> and I could be wrong. Okay. I love those little tiny miniature shopping carts. Some of the uh, shopping um, grocery malls have. Shopping. When we go shopping, my mummy and me, she buys all the groceries like brown bread and tea and liver and onions and uh, broccoli. I grab what's important like ketchup and jam and licorice and corn pops and apples and ham. I grab crunchy, munchy and red seedless grapes and oodles of noodles and chocolate and dates. I grab big buns, ice cream and sweet apple jack. Then when we're finished, mum puts mine all back <laughs> as I border on a tantrum attack. <laughs> okay. Oh, how about the first one? Footpath. It's oh. short, but it's beautiful. Which one? Footpath to the Sea is your first page. Which is the first one? First page. First page, Summer uh, Storm? One more. Footpath to the Sea. Uh, 11. Oh. This is um, Cornwall. It's going down to a place, um, um, I can't remember the name anyway. A wonderful series on Doc Martin, if you ever watched that. Margo and I stayed there before Doc Martin came and took over. But anyway, footpath to the sea. With aching limbs and gnarled, knobby cane, the old man puffs pants to keep astride his youthful companions, cantering down the winding footpath to the sea. He arrives, he sits, his gasping abates. Children race, shout with joy to reach the cove, chasing gulls with congregation uh, from the congregation on the slip of splintered shell among the frothy weeds and stones to frantic flight. The old man sits in silence, watches, remembers. A tear slides down his cheek. And there's one more here that I still got a marker in. Shall I do it? It's Crescent Beach. This is where we live. This is, you've all heard this one. But Great expanse of mud and sand, a rocky bank and water birds, joggers in the rain. Brown never turns to brilliant gold when sunshine dapples through the clouds to paint the trees with silver lace and sparkles on the bay. A stately conference of heron debate the gulls about the evening catch and call the tide to shore. Above the model pools, a pair of eagles glide while crows protest the rumbly train that groans and grinds its way around the headland to the bay. In early May, the children flock like ducklings with buckets and spades, boots and yellow hats. They squat in puddles and tease the crabs and dig for oceans in the watery sand. Along the shore, their minders sit on logs. While they watch, they chatter, drink their tea, and call in vain to stragglers in the pools. As far as I can see, the paddlers wander out on miles and miles of sand and weed through shallow pools, all shimmering beneath the morning glare. Gulls, white, brown, grey, squabble at a hamper in the sand while wrappers gaily flutter in the wind. A dozen kites swim hard against the breeze like minnows with long waggling tails. 
one swoops to chase a crow, and then its cross piece snaps to meet stern justice on the rocks below. Despite the angry stones hurled at its taunts, the crow flaps down to strut and sound rebuke. With blankets, chairs, umbrellas, hamper, radio, another gang of picnickers arrives by car to taste a sun, uh, summer day at Crescent Beach. Through steamy miles of traffic horns and roaring trucks, they've traveled far to sit upon the sand and blare their choice of joy for all to share. <laughs> okay. Um, just, I'm, well, there are more postcards and I don't know. What, help me along here, Candace. I can, uh, Galway Bay. This is Galway, Galway Road. Beach, this is Galway. Beach trees overhung sun, mottled puddles glistening from the night rain. Blackthorn fringes line high edges, freckled with white wild garlic and bluebells. Hairpin turns spring upon narrow stone bridges. Sometimes we stop and turn back, sometimes they do. Sign at a blind corner. Free range children. Careful. <laughs> I always love that free range children. I actually saw a sign there. Ah, gotta use it. Oh, there's so much more here. Ah, uh, just maybe a couple of little. Oh, back to Turkey. Is that okay? Yeah. The carpet seller. Have, have, have any of you been to Turkey? You will recognize this then. Okay, this is sweet tea and thick coffee. Waver our resolve. Rug over rug over rug displays hours, months, years of nimble finger dedication. Now they're a gift of love at dead horse prices. Those much money has filled my palms, I shall die poor in the wealth of this world. I am rich only in friends and in the joy of such fine art. Art is love. Love has no price. We almost bought a carpet. But <laughs> what I did was I bought the little ones. They they come. They like postcards. And so when the carpet seller said, "Would you buy my?" I said, "Oh, I've already got five of them." <laughs> okay. Um, here's a little one from Mexico, and um, uh, we were on a beach in La Manzanilla, um, and there's um, a little graveyard there, and one of the graves was obviously to a little girl, and I named her Carmelita. This is Car the Manzanilla, Carmelita's Garden. Here on a sandy bank above the pounding surf, the ghost of little Carmelita, no more than five, romps alone beneath the stars. Long past her time for bed, she sings a spirited circle game. Oh, chippy, 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 ole, 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 Oh, cheapy, 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 ole, ole, ole. She skips out past her tiny garden to join the weeds beyond. No children come to play, only Mother Nature embraces her. Dogs, seagulls, horny lizards, scorpions. When someone has lit a fire, where someone has lit a fire to burn the trash, she cheerily sings by the mausoleums, plastic lilies, cracked vases, faded wreaths, Cement and wooden crosses and dusty tombs all covered by weeds. Oh, chippy, 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 cheerily, chippy, 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 chippy cheerily. Oh, hmm. Okay, Ben, how about three more? And I've got three? Them, I've got them three picked. They're small. You've got them picked, okay. Yeah. What page? Uh, okay. Wrong, wrong book. Oh, wrong book. <laughs> you like to mix it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, page 17. 16. I think exactly. I think somebody likes this book. <laughs> what page? 16 and 17. 16 and 17, oh my goodness. Okay, that's fair enough. Yeah, they're small and they're nice. 16, 17. I walk in the woods in October. This was in, uh, we were visiting my son and daughter-in-law and my grandson who's four in Toronto. We went for a walk in the woods last October. A walk in the woods in October. Nature nudges the season's breast into a million subtle hues, spreading her technicolor mantle brighter than Joseph's fabled coat. 
We strolled through October perfume in the palm of a forest citadel, embraced by the hush of leaves falling. The burnt amber sky vibrates in ghostly whispers and sighs, setting the table for twilight. Nature nudges our hearts as we walk inside her harmony through those October woods. Night falls. Teardrops fall from the trees. Moonlight sweeps pathways through the broken clouds. Night falls and shawls the shore. Bats flip for fireflies on the bay. A lonely loon calls. A twig snaps in the dark. Something moves behind me, not real, ghostly, hazing in and out. Night falls apart in surreal pieces, breaking the dawn to the day. And which was Penny's, 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 Garden. Penny's Garden? I really like Penny's Okay, Garden. Penny, I was at my aunt in Cornwall. She's gone now. She had a lovely garden and it was pretty well run down. <laughs> A wild garden grows by a cottage near the bay. The trellis is old and faded, but beauty still climbs her frame and crowns the posts where the garden gate was hung. Thick moss beneath the cypress tree stretches onto the old rope swing. Periwinkle scatters on the garden path where thrushes still warble and sing. The clematis reaches tall to the bickering of blackbirds, protesting the mere presence of an old yellow cat perched on the great stone wall. This is Penny's garden, and perhaps it's known better days, but old memories survive and come alive when I walk that periwinkle path at dusk with Penny's go ghost. 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 Thank you. And I must say, I, I, had, I hadn't even really dreamed too much of having poetry books published, but I had given up trying to get other books published and I bumped into Manolis one day and uh, he, he just asked me, did you, did, did you send me a letter um, maybe about a year ago or something, a query, what's called a query letter? And I said, yes, I probably did. And he said, do you have your manuscript with you? And I said, no but I'll run home and get it. <laughs> and I started it and so two books came out of that. And then one day, Candace here said, Ben, you're, you're in anthologies, you in magazines, uh, all over the place. You've even judged poetry contests, one national. Why don't you have any poetry books officially published? I said, well, I had three. They're unofficial, uh, called self-published. And so she said, well, we've got to fix that. <laughs> and she did. Yeah. And wow. <laughs> so